one of the leaders of a political party in the United Kingdom got into trouble in the last day or so because he made a statement that was not convenient to the narrative. I'll let you listen to what he said, and then I'll just give some context to what this is referring to from a scientific perspective. So this is Nigel Farage. He's the leader of the opposition um, reform party. And he was on Times Radio and he said this, this is a 10 second clip. So let's hope that you can hear it. And he made this statement here. I believe in vaccinations when they're vaccinations. Jim. I don't think what happened with COVID were vaccinations because we have to, you have to keep having them every six months. So that's a very different debate. But I believe in vaccinations. So let's pause it there. So he, this was just a sound bite from what he said in terms of the fact that he believed in vaccinations when they are vaccinations. But if you keep on getting it over and over again, his view is that these are not vaccinations. I'll make you listen to it again, just so that you capture exactly what he was referring to. Here we go again. I believe in vaccinations when they're vaccinations. Jim. I don't think what happened with COVID were vaccinations because we have to, you have to keep having them every six months. So that's a very different debate. But I believe in vaccinations. So again, I pause it here. So he's saying what a lot of people think, which is why so many people are no longer taking booster vaccines. And it comes to a really important scientific question. Why did COVID vaccines need so many boosters? Now, the truth is, is that we have some degree of scientific dishonesty happening and there is a determination to hold on to a narrative rather than actually talk about what really is the issue now you have to remember in the covid pandemic it, people tend to associate covid vaccines with mrna vaccines and in a sense they have become largely vilified because they are the last man standing but you have to remember that there were multiple different platforms that were tried. Whole virus vaccines were done in primarily China and they did their va um, vaccines across the East. The uh, adenovirus vac uh, vector platforms like the j, j or the AstraZeneca were also used. Protein vaccines were also used. mRNA vaccines were also used. And the reality is that none of them have been able to provide what is needed, which is sterilizing immunity. And this is what he is making reference to. Now, they keep on trying to compare COVID vaccines to flu vaccines, you know, because of the new variants that are coming out. So therefore, you need to update your COVID vaccines. But even when they update them, they still don't give sterilizing immunity. And this is down to the science. And what I think has happened here is that there is such a determination to maintain a narrative that even when the science is obviously not making sense, they don't come and be honest. So here is the reality. The vaccines were, were not designed to provide sterilizing immunity. They were designed to reduce the risk of severe COVID by exposing the body to a particular part of the virus. Now they chose the spike protein. It, it, they did it because it was the most immunogenic part of the virus. But in my view, because I was looking at autoimmune responses, it carried the greatest risk. So it would give you the biggest antibody response, but it would come with certain other risks. They could have used other parts of the virus in order to try and do that and in order to get that context i've got as usual a slide um present for you to be able to to see it um what i'm talking about and um the point is is that when you look at the uh virus the spike protein is the part that was primarily chosen except for the whole virus vaccines that the chinese used but their limitation was that when they use these attenuated viruses many of them didn't have that much spy protein on it and so therefore it was hit and miss because immune system needed somewhat to be able to react to this 
You could have used a nuclear capsid protein, not so great, membrane protein, envelope protein, ORF proteins. There are multiple proteins that could have been used. But one of the points that I make reference to is that there are some viral infections that are not easily amenable to a vaccine, like dengue, because you have different viral strains, and if you lock the immune system into one, you can then get hemorrhagic fever. So in the same way with COVID, and this is the bit that I, I can't understand why the scientific community doesn't just say this. The reality is that the primary aim was to reduce severe disease, which they did. They reduced the likelihood of someone progressing to a cytokine storm. That was what it was supposed to do. Now, all that happened was that they got greedy. They thought that, heck, you know, it seems to reduce transmission based on the studies. I think what it was doing was reducing symptomatic disease rather than transmission, because as you can see, it doesn't matter in highly vaccinated countries, they are still transmitting virus. So they got greedy. They then tried to mandate vaccines on everybody. And in the process, that's when they did the own goal. So it's important to get the context here. These were designed more like a therapeutic rather than, say, the measles vaccine. But in the process of them doing this, they have destroyed the reputation of every single vaccine, which is why people aren't taking their measles and uh, the MMR vaccines. They're not taking any other vaccines because they are now perceiving that all vaccines were like what happened in the pandemic. That was a huge, horrendous public health mistake. And they're still not going back on it. And it's because they're holding on to that narrative. And to me, it makes no sense because the public has already made up their minds as to what they think is going on. And so if you don't go back on it, if you keep on leaving it the way that it is now, you have completely lost the public. Because Nigel Farage has just said what so many people are thinking. And if you're just joining now, this is what he said. I believe in vaccinations when they're vaccinations. Jim. I don't think what happened with COVID were vaccinations. Because we have to, you have to keep having them every six months. So that's a very different debate. I believe in vaccinations. So again, this is what I'm saying. He is just saying what most people are thinking. They're not operating like what you would expect. They don't provide sterilizing immunity. And again... This was just flawed thinking with the science. If they had just looked at the science, because we were saying this from early 2021, we were already coming up with a plan B because we said, this is not going to stimulate mucosal immunity. This virus, if you don't have good mucosal immunity, it is going to infect. And this is exactly what has happened. An injectable vaccine is not particularly good at stimulating your immune system in the lining of your respiratory tract to produce IgA antibodies and block infection. That's just the reality. And in this virus, you had to block that infection. And so therefore, this is why if they were going for anything, they should have gone for mucosal vaccines. They didn't have the technology. They thought that they could push through mRNA. I think that they gambled with the wrong disease and we are seeing the outcomes of it. And this has now damaged the perception of vaccination across the world. And it's going to take them decades to reverse that thinking, all because they had used a technology in a disease that they didn't fully understand. And for those people who will still argue and still say, no, the vaccines work, they work the way they should, that's a lie. They did not work the way that they should. If they did, the pandemic would really have been over in highly vaccinated regions. This was not just about the variants. The variants are slight amino acid changes that occur in the spike protein. A good immune system would have been able to address that, as we can see in low vaccinated parts of the world, they don't have any problems. This is the reality. Until we get some honesty, we will continue to hear this lack and this thought pattern coming from the public. As a final reminder, I will let you listen to what he had to say, just in case you've just joined. 
Here is Nigel Farage, the leader of the Reform Party in the UK, saying what they didn't want him to say, so they've been really upset with him. But here is what he said from a 10-second clip. I believe in vaccinations when they're vaccinations. Jim. I don't think what happened with COVID were vaccinations, because we have to, you have to keep having them every six months. So that's a very different debate. But I believe in vaccinations yeah. when they're vaccinations. Jim. I don't think what happened with COVID were vaccinations, because we have to, you have to keep having them every six months. So that's a very different debate. But I believe. As I said, is he wrong? Was he wrong for saying it? Was he wrong for thinking it? That's a different issue. So as we continue with the science, have a great evening. And we look forward to bringing you more in the near future. A hero, an immune adventure, humming heroes. Your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.